Hello, my family. Okay, so today I really didn't intend to actually want to put out a video. However, um, circumstances change. Sometimes it's going to be hard to describe to you what happens at times. Most of my family knows this by now about me, and some of my friends do, but occasionally there will something come over me in my spirit, in my heart, and tell me to do a certain situation. So technically, here's what happened. I started thinking about the ingredients for supper tonight, which is I am fixing to be making a beautiful Mediterranean bass fish dinner with a side salad, some kamada beans, and green beans for my husband. And as I was picking my ingredients within my garden, this feeling came upon me is take you with me. Now, I'm not sure exactly why, but I'm taking you with me. I am actually going to take you on the harvest out here on the homestead. I'm going to take you where you can hear nature. What I get to witness every day that I come out here and gather from the crops that we had planted and be able to, I guess, be in nature with me to experience what homesteading can be like, the satisfaction of hearing so much going on around you and know that when you come inside with that basket that you have harvested, that feeling of gratitude, that feeling of satisfaction, that feeling of just so much joy and so much peace and so much flavor. So, I'm going to take you with me. Now, I'm kind of standing in a bad spot, as I realized, because my honeybees are right here, and I'm kind of in their path. So, I'm going to take you in another direction where I'm actually harvesting, and I'm going to take you along with me. So, let's go harvesting. Okay, so, currently, this is my dill patch, and it had been raining so it's kind of leaned over some, but I'm needing some fresh dill for um, some of the herbs and seasonings that go in my fish dish. So I'm just sporadically coming through and just picking some of my branches for my dill that I can bring into my meal and chop them up. So we're going to go ahead and harvest some of this and I noticed that some of my tea also could use some harvesting again so I'm going to be harvesting some of that now I have a good amount I started this earlier so I have a good amount of dill this is perfect for my supper tonight and next we're actually going to go and harvest from our parsley stock Before I go to the parsley, I'm going to see if I can give you a bird's eye view here a little bit of this popcorn, y'all. Look at this amazing popcorn. It is just growing so fast. I'm hoping this means a good sign. It is absolutely amazing. It's beautiful. We have Chinese hollis. I have some pink. I have some blue. And I can't remember strawberry strawberry is another one so I am really hoping this turns out good we've been having a lot of rain so all I can do at this point is hope and pray everything comes out right but so far this is the popcorn that I grew from seed this right here is the oregano patch that I have been trimming the other day I had already given it a really good haircut I dehydrated the oregano and this is where I have about a half gallon size already of oregano. I can get fresh, I can dry it, and I don't necessarily have to buy oregano from the grocery store. I sincerely try to grow as much as I can on my own. And this is actually a perennial. It keeps coming back every year. But now to the patch I've been looking for that I need towards dinner. And now I'm at my beautiful parsley. So 
So I'm just coming out here because I need this for a few things in my supper tonight. So I'm just going to go through here picking and trimming. And when I do this, it helps promote it more to keep growing. So, and I definitely want to keep this growth moving on this. So I'll usually take out the biggest stems first. That way I can keep it moving and keep it growing. To be able to have my own herbs is so, so satisfying. And that goes for anything, honestly. Anything in my garden, to be able to have it for myself, knowing that I grew this, I can come out here. Notice this is my, this is my grocery store, y'all. This is what I do. The satisfaction of coming out here after all that time of waiting, weeding, you know, it just, this is what I was talking about. And I guess that's the reason for this video was to take you on this trip to give you a bird's eye view of what this is like to be able to do this. You know, I do believe when things happen that way and I get those urges or I get those, you know, what I call little messages, um, they're for a reason and maybe it's to show you the goodness of being able to do this for yourself. It, it, it is really hard to describe. It is one of the hardest things I have with finding words, the satisfaction of what this means to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue. Just pick what I need here towards my meal. Because I need this for my fish and actually for my cannelli beans. And you know, I may make this meal with you uh, and, and let you see firsthand what a good Mediterranean dish looks like, actually, which can be low carb, which I'm learning. Um, it's not all sweet potatoes and potatoes and bread all the time. It can be, but you can make this leaner. You can make this less carbs you can make mediterranean well this is mediterranean y'all this right here is all mediterranean is and you put together fresh food so and i guess it was a way to simplify that to you this is mediterranean so now i have two i have my bunch of dill and now I have my parsley for my meal. Let me go around this way right quick. Like I said, I need this for two of my dishes. So I can come out here. Can you hear those birds? That sounds so pretty. Earlier my quails were singing too. They sounded so pretty. I kind of wish they'd do it now that I'm a little bit closer to them so you could hear them. Alright, so we have now our dill and we have our parsley. And until these are ready to be used, they will be put into a glass of water to keep them fresh. So, And, and that is after I clean them off and everything. So I should have enough here for both of my meals. So now I'm going to go to my tea because I noticed that some of the tea needed to be cut. And we'll take, and I'll do this whole harvesting with you today. So let's go to our tea section. Okay, I started to move and then I'm going to see if they'll do it again. Uh, I started to move and then the quail started singing. So I thought I'd take a moment. I could pick some more and see if you can hear what they sound like. Those are those babies that we raised from, um, that we hatched, actually. And you've watched them grow up. Now they're mature, and I couldn't wait for you to hear them just be a part of it. Now hopefully they will. And I can never get enough parsley anyway, so...
Ah, oh, my littles ain't gonna do it now. Darn it. I was really hoping y'all because they have such a distinct sound. Oh well, let's go and get our tea done then. Okay, so this is the area where my Anna's hyssop is. And Anna's hyssop, our anise hyssop, beautiful, beautiful type of tea. This makes an amazing licorice flavored tea. And so it's starting to get up there. I need to trim it back. So that's exactly what I'm fixing to do right now. It will also promote it to keep growing. I dry the leaves, and again, like all my others, after I dry the leaves, I store them in a jar, and I enjoy some farm fresh homestead raised tea. There is such a satisfying feeling to all of this. Beautiful flavors, and all this rain. All these weeds come up pretty quickly, so I need to get this out of here, too. I mean, I'll just take you out and work on the homestead and, I don't know, give you a taste of what it's like to be out here with me and show you it's really not that bad to be out here. It's, like I said, again, it's undescribable. going to take and trim this down because like all the others like the dill like the parsley when you trim this down it just promotes it like you would basil it just keeps it to come back for more you wanted to be able to do that actually you don't want to cut too far off of it though because you want it to be able to produce more and leave like a photosynthesis of something left behind so I'm just coming through here and taking out these bigger stems and letting the rest of this grow only cutting it back so far now I've harvested off the one in the pot I haven't harvested off of this one for a while so I'm going to come through here and I could use a beautiful glass or cup of tea this evening so I like to do that while I'm watching TV with hubby and sit back and relax and just drink farm fresh homegrown tea I'm just gonna give it a haircut Let's see here. Yeah. come back here these two right here that one back here and that's it wait, wait a minute I got one more I think right here Let's see here where does this one go yeah I right, take that one down there and that's it y'all here is my beautiful basket of anise hyssop now I take this inside dry them or at wash them dry them off a bit Stick these in the dehydrator, or I can use them fresh just like this in boiling water, steep them for 10 minutes, and have a beautiful, oh, if you could smell, if you can just smell that, it's just oh, beautiful, beautiful anise scent, and the flavor is really, really good. So I got a good haircut going on here, I'm going to take you... Probably through the rest of the garden and let you see the progress. Things have been growing up pretty fast around here with all this rain. Oh, and I came up, I thought I spoke about how the frost, hang on a minute. That's better. So I spoke about how the frost had taken out a few of our plants. They took out quite a bit of our fruit and I talked about the olive tree and now for the most part those that we had lost already i actually got rid of the plants but there was a surprise and i've learned 
this homestead, and I, I, I need to, I, I guess, need to explain what this homestead is to me besides just the homestead, besides it providing food for my table and for the nourishment for us. I had already spoke to you that I am also a woman of faith, and there's lessons out here. And this olive tree amazingly taught me a lesson is to never assume. It was pretty wild because there was a miracle behind this. It, to my eyes, it was completely gone. So I literally, I got scared after I found out what I just saw. I pulled it up from the ground. I took the shovel all the way around it thinking it was dead. I assumed it was totally gone. Now let me show you what I found. Look here, y'all. So I end up trimming this back because this was all dead. But do you see this? When I pulled this up out of the ground, this thing had formed a whole new stem and it's gonna regrow all over. Now later on in the season, like fall, I'm gonna cut this back. I am actually going to bring this indoors for right now because it is so small. This little thing, against all odds, survived. And I just couldn't be more blessed to have seen this. So I thought I'd show that to you as well and show you the lessons maybe that I get taught on this homestead about things and that was one of them. Now this baby will be coming in this winter because I am going to babyfy it. I took it out of the ground and I put it in a planter. I'm going to show you the rest of the garden. Remember our pepper house? Take a look at this, y'all. <laughs> I'm I, I, My mind is blown right now. There's all our beans. These are the um, bush beans, and I've got blooms everywhere on this. As a matter of fact, I kind of think I did a mistake because I planted it right here where the artichoke is. Um, these here is... Again, these are the eggplant. This is a hit or miss. I don't know what it's going to do, but I'm going to wait it out and see. Then here, look at this. These are beets. We're getting a few. I might not get a lot, but you know, I'm learning to be grateful for all things. Now, I am going to be, this is going to start to grow now, so, and it's showing more growth. These are the peppers. These are the ones that started to stunt down. But I've noticed here, let's see if we can get in here and show you this. Do you see these peppers on here? I'm going to pick these peppers and maybe they're early. They would probably give it a better chance to grow up, son, because the ones I have picked, look y'all, they're growing quite well. So there is a prayer of a chance. So I just take the fruit off of them and allow these to grow up. And I am getting... I am getting beautiful peppers, y'all. Absolutely beautiful peppers. Now, this is the bed where I put fresh six months ago, more than that now. But over the winter, this is where I put the fresh manure from our chickens in here and just let this sit all winter. And I'm actually going to do that with the quail manure. Let me show you this. Here's our basil. I am getting ready to pick and harvest these. Actually, I need to do that right now. I am going to be harvesting this and turn this into homemade pesto. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see this too well, but I'm going to try and work with this. So I have these crowning tops, as you can see this crowning here. Now if I let this keep going, it's actually going to start producing flowers. So I actually want to start taking these tops off because I want to promote more growth out of it so i'm basically going to come through here now technically if i wanted to i could cut this down to about here at this bottom base but i actually want to go right about here on this second set of crowns so i'm just going to basically take the tops off of this same with this one here so i'm going to come down that far with it same with this one here I'm taking basically these tops off of here because I do want to promote more growth to my basil. And then all of this is going to be processed and made into homemade pesto. 
that I can literally put in my freezer and use it along the way as much as I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one off too. And there's my harvesting of basils. And this is amazing. Y'all, I just cannot tell you enough how amazing this is. I'll set you up and show you some more of these. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see this one here, but back here is her banana peppers, y'all. Look at this. Look at these. They've just And this plant is little, so I want it to actually grow some more. So I am actually going to take some of these peppers that they produce off of here. Bless its heart. And let this grow some more. We can use these and let this put more energy into the growing. We have some cayennes coming up. I've got, oh my goodness, cilantro of everything. Let me take you to the tomato house. You are not going to believe that. And look here. That is the second artichoke. I have never seen these plants look so amazing in our gardens. And that was just using the natural fertilizers on our own homestead. I got smart this year, y'all. And this is what I was doing. And I took you with me during this process. Now let me take you to the tomato house. That's the wild jungle, y'all. I'm going to take you down this line. These, on this side of this greenhouse, is actually our Roma-based tomatoes. These are our paste tomatoes. The cilantro, I mean, this weather's flipped so much, it's even put on flowers now. It's bolting on me. But I wanted you to see, look what's going on here. That's just the Roma side. Fears off towards the back over here. And then over here, these are our slicing tomatoes going on. The tomatillas that are growing and forming fruit on them. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Look, we're getting tomatoes on here. We checked the front and they're growing just as crazy with our cherry tomatoes as these are. So we've got bunches. Oh, look at this one here. We got tomatoes starting on everywhere. And it looks like I have some more basil that I can pick in here as well. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go show you my demon side of my garden. This bed right here is my problem child. A immense problem child. As you see all those flowers, that is all my arugula bolting like crazy. And then I have this beautiful bed of lettuce sitting in here that I'm still being able to harvest. Only there's one problem. And that problem is I can't even get in here to pull the weeds out because of this right here. This is ants. Ants that took over this bed. And I am so angry about this. I'm trying to keep this... Now this is bolting on me, so I'm going to have to cut it down. They get really bitter, y'all, if you don't. So I'm just going to forewarn you, if you get lettuce, and this is time of season, it's going to get hard. So what I may end up doing for my lettuce, just to be able to keep it, is start growing it indoors. So that way I can have lettuce year-round. I had thought that that weather had took out my fig tree as well. And here's what I learned. Just like the olive tree, it did take out the old branches, but it, everything started new. So I'm extremely grateful to that. Though we are not going to get any fruit this year, it is sad, but at least it didn't kill off our plants. So um, I need to harvest some more of basil that I see. And I'm going to take you inside and show you what this harvest looks like. Okay, y'all, so everything was picked. When I say farm fresh in my videos, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Things that were picked on this homestead and brought in, literally, like my um, symbol says, farm to table. And like I said, this is a satisfying feeling. I'm just going to take each one here right now, each step, each process, these Right now are the basils that I'm fixing to clean off. This is going to be my homemade pesto. Pesto is used in Mediterranean dishes as well. 
every time I, I cannot say and this right here y'all this right here is when I say sometimes I felt like putting my hands up in the air and saying you know do I want to keep doing this but then when I go out and I'm able to do this when I'm able to let me turn this up just a little when I'm able to come out here harvest out here come inside wash all this up and then get a good look at what was grown on this homestead it's enough to tell me yes I want to keep doing this it's enough to tell me that I didn't have to waste the gasoline to go to the grocery store when this is so much better this is homegrown this is farm fresh the nutrients the vitamins everything in here is so pure and so it is worth it to me it's a flavoring oh my goodness y'all just it is absolutely amazing and no i didn't go to a farmer's market and i know sometimes we have to but this is why i encourage you and i don't down anybody who can't I, i've told you that and i will continue to say so but if i can encourage you just a little bit to take this trip with me to take you through this process with me and just to give you a bird's eye view of what this is like to be able to come indoors because when I take you on my videos whether it be in the kitchen I spend friendship coffee moment with you I take you out on the homestead and we'll feed the chickens or I'll show you progress on the farm what I'm doing is including you and as a part of my life is as if this homestead wasn't just mine and my husband's but it belongs to all of us as a community and it gives you an idea what it's like to have this community what it's like to have this blessing and so I share with you as to maybe you get that sense of feeling of being right there with me as if it was yours so you know what this would basically kind of feel like so this was the basil we've got this cleaned off very well I'm gonna set this aside and look at that beautiful bouquet y'all absolutely beautiful bouquet now I'm gonna set this aside so that these can get dried off a bit because this will be stored in the refrigerator until I am able to get this processed for pesto because I'm gonna need some pine nuts for this and give me one minute to get this on a towel so that I can get these drained off. The next one I'm going to do, and actually need a jar for this, because I'm working on the um, parsley that we cook, uh, clipped. Now, again, this will be used towards supper tonight, but it's amazing. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. I'm just going to try to put this together here. I've got them going every which way at the moment. I try to keep them all in one bundle to make it easier on me. They don't always work that way, but I got it. There we go. I got a few more right here. And I could go to Walmart, but I've noticed that Walmart's even, like my cilantro, it's bolting, so when I can come outside on my farm fresh and just do this I prefer this anyways because I know what I have and they're heirlooms so I just take and I wash off my stems rinse this off really good Give them a bit of a shake. Hopefully I don't get this water on my camera. And until I'm ready to use them. I take them just like this. And store them in my jar. And then I'll take it and put it on my counter here. Or my, my desk, I call it. My kitchen desk. And when I'm ready to use it, we will pull these through. Same thing I'm going to do with the fresh dill. Again, 
again I'm just going to grab them by their stems run them under cold water wash these off really good and I will use this towards supper tonight as well Almost got them. So, this gets run through. Whoa, that one stuck to my fingers. Oh, this fresh scent. I think these were called bouquet um, seeds. The seeds for these were bouquet, I believe. Shake them off a little bit again, just like the parsley. Fill this up with water, stick these in until I'm ready to use them. And this whole entire stock will actually be used for our fish dinner tonight. And then the surprise I told you that I was sitting there harvesting those peppers. I gotta show this to y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. Pinch this out. This is where our herbs were sitting in. And now these peppers here, I can literally... I can take these and cut these up and freeze them. I can use these fresh. Yes, they are young, but they're still usable. So, I want you to see this, y'all. Straight from my own crops. Those poor little plants, they were little. But you know what? This is what I, another thing that shows me something. You know, in life, it doesn't matter. And I guess this is the same thing. Life's lessons. When I sit with you at coffee time and I tell you how important you are to me, what you mean to me, um, and that when I teach you or when I share with you, I don't really want to call it teaching. I want to call it sharing. When I share with you, and I want to be able to, you know what, I'm going to face this with you all. I, I don't want to just talk without looking at you. This is how important you are to me. When, and this is where I'm going to get with this lesson. When I talk to you, and I've spoke to you, and I've shared with you with my cup of coffee, I explain to you, it doesn't matter whether you're big or you're small, whether you have a patio, or whether you're growing in grow pots, or whether you have a huge farm, or whether you have, just like me, nothing but um, boxes to grow out of raised beds, um, whether you have lots of land, or 0 0.34 acres of land like I do, trying to utilize everything you have, it doesn't matter. We could be great, and we can be small. Let my pepper plants prove that to you. You've seen how small some of those plants were. But look, y'all. What can you say that small can do something that mighty? And why can't we do that? These plants give me their effort. They give me their poor little heart all. And I want to give up on them every year. I want to say no. And it becomes deeper than that. It isn't, therefore, about just the plant. Because honestly, without the seed, there would be nothing growing anyways. But it's what the Lord provides me. My provisions. When I sit there and say, Lord, what am I going to do? And many of us have done that. We have all been in that situation. And I've told you, it did, we don't have to be rich. We're not poor by means, of any means. We're all in different situations. I had a really good conversation with somebody very dear to me about this today. We are all placed in different situations. We don't, it does not mean that one is better than the other. In any situation, whether we have money, whether we don't have money, whether we have an abundance amount of food, or whether we just have a little. Y'all, these are blessings. These are major blessings. But these are our provisions. The only thing we have to do is till the soil. And that's it. We could have all of this. It all could be ours. Provisions upon provisions can all be ours. Every little plant will give you its all to put food on your table. Just like it's going to put food on my table. 
is this worth it? Through all the pain, the suffering, the weather changes, the fertilizing, is it worth it? Every time I have a sickness with my pets or my farm animals, is it worth it when heat exhaustion takes out or deep freeze takes out one of my chickens? Is it worth it when things don't grow the way they're supposed to grow? Is it worth it when things get stunted and I don't know how it's going to turn out? Is it worth it when I can't replace with the seed and I have to go to a grocery store and purchase from a can? My answer to all of this is yes. It is so much worth it because my provisions, all I had to do was plant the seed. Have faith that God will provide my needs, great or small, and be thankful for everything that I get. Because as of right now, y'all, these little bit of peppers, look, I'm just going to go ahead and show this to you. From those itty bitty plants, this whole bowl whoops, of peppers right here is great. This basket of tea is great. I don't have to buy this. These fresh herbs going to be used for my food, for flavor, is worth it. It's great to me. The half gallon of oregano that I have that I dehydrated and picked is worth it. That big, huge bunch of basil, this. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. this yeah it's worth it this is why I encourage you all to do what you can do for yourselves this is why I say it doesn't matter how you do what you do and even if you have to use a grow pot this is why I encourage you you don't have to have a great amount of things because here's here's the instance what the Lord showed me Y'all, when he went amongst the greatness of all these people, you know, this is, this is really powerful. Honestly, this is really powerful. And sometimes this is where my homestead takes me. I'll tell you, I am taking you on the real life of what this homestead does for me, what it does to me, and why I keep going even through the frustrations of everything. Hang on. The lighting was starting to get a bit off because it's fixing the rain and that's the reason why we came in early from the harvesting. But what the Lord showed me is, I looked at it as everything is, Lord, this just isn't enough. Because here's where my thoughts go is, I have a freezer to fill. I have a pantry to fill. But how dare I say this isn't enough when I just showed you everything from something small what was given to my family that provision I normally would not had if it weren't for planting that seed and I hope you understand where I'm going with this the Lord forgive me y'all no and as a matter of fact I can't say forgive me because this is who I am this is where I come from this is how all of this started in the first place there was a point in my life, there was a point in mine and my husband's life, we were hungry, y'all. And not everybody goes through that. I understand that. Not everybody goes through that. But there are a lot who do. And I was on my knees. I had nowhere else to turn. Some places don't have pantries. Some places don't have provisions for you. And it leaves you on your knees. Lord, what do I do? Five years ago, that's where I was. And it started out was I got a small pack of seeds and I put it in the ground. And y'all, I produced food. And this homestead grew from there. This homestead provided me with nourishment. This homestead, starting this, provided me with food. I did not have to worry about and every little thing just like when Jesus went to the multitudes and the disciples told them well Lord we only have five fish and a few loaves of bread and he said give it to them all 
and it was never ending. It never stopped. There was so much, there was leftovers. The same thing that can happen here from something small. Give yourselves credit. Something small is worth it. Don't let anybody tell you that it isn't. Because look, I showed you small plants, what they provided me. It doesn't matter, y'all. I just, these are lessons, and these are what keep me going on this homestead. Because, like I said, I could be the richest person in the world and be so dumb. I have so much in life. I might not have the riches in life, but I have so much in life. I have health. I have nourishment. I have food. I have a roof over my head. And I have so much to be thankful for. So many, so many don't understand what they have or what they could have. Maybe it's because they don't have anybody that can lead them there. And maybe I am the one. Maybe that's the reason why this was this YouTube channel was started a year ago. Maybe this is why. To reach out to others who are in my shoes or in other shoes who have no direction. They don't have anybody enough to love them enough to take them on this. Take them on this journey. Show them direction. Yes, we have low carb because, well, we have a sickness and we got to be able to do something. But do you understand what this freshness is doing? Not a single thing in this homegrown is going to hurt my husband. It's not a processed food. It's an all-natural food. The way it was in the Old Testament ways. This is all-natural. And it will hurt nobody. If anything, it puts vitamins, nutrients, minerals within your body. It gives you life. This is what homesteading is about. This is what Mediterranean is. It is nothing but unprocessed, all natural food. You go literally outside like I took you with me to pick. And we gathered together. We gathered from something small we gathered and we got so much y'all so much these are where you don't get to see when i go out to my garden i come in and my gatherings and after i'm through my cleaning before i even do my processing you don't see me when i have tears rolling down my eyes thanking the good lord for the blessings above for what he had done and all i had to do was plant the seed had faith that it would be my provisions would be met whether they come out perfect or not or whether whether some of them worked grew or not i give grateful i am grateful for everything that does produce it doesn't have to be perfect i'm not perfect and if i have to go to a store for some of this stuff and put it in my pantry i'm grateful to be able to do that I can sell some of my eggs, go to the grocery store, get those provisions and put them on my shelf. Okay, so if I sell my eggs for $3 a dozen, I can go to the grocery store, get three cans of food and put them in my pantry and I have something to eat. Gratitude. It's something that I worked hard for. And it's something that I know that without the gratitude and without the thanksgiving, None of this would have a meaning to it. It's not just something I do. This has an absolute meaning, y'all, because five years ago, I knew what it was like to go to bed hungry and not know where my next meal was coming from. Sometimes in life, things like that happen. Through trucking at that point, it was hard. Loads were hard to find. My husband was stuck, and every time we turned around that truck, because we owned it, that truck needed repair after repair after repair. We weren't making anything. It was broke down more than we can bring anything in. But I knew what it was like. I knew what it was like to try to pawn everything that I can just to go get food to. One day, I took that instead and went and bought seeds, and I took my faith into my ground. I grew because I learned that certain things in my ground just didn't work. But I've grown, and five years later, you see what we have today. It's because I started with something that I knew. All right, Lord, you know, 
plant those seeds and I'm going to trust that you can help me through this. I've tried everything else, why not? And so that's how we grew. And if I could, it's called Parton's Heritage Homestead, but this homestead was based by faith, based by gratitude, based by thanksgiving, because I'm nourished today. I have more knowledge on how to use this food. I've lost a tremendous amount of weight. I have improved our health greatly. I've reached out a year later, or, or almost a year now, to share with others because I knew what it was like to be in this, it seems in this world alone. No, nobody understands you. Nobody seems to care either. But there are more of us who do care. We've just not seen so much. And I took that chance and said, you know what? I'm gonna take this opportunity and I am going to reach out. I am uncomfortable in everything about this, but I'm gonna do it. And I'm not sorry I did. You all bless me and you help me more than you will ever know. You keep me going strong every time and I share. Granted, I know that every not everything that I do on my channels is going to be for everyone and I'm perfectly fine with that, y'all. I am not looking to be the most popular person in the world. What I'm looking at is being your friend. What I'm looking at is giving you hope, bringing you faith, and showing you how I survived, how I survive every day, but how I stay healthy, how I stay strong, and how I do it efficiently, and not so costly, because we are all in situations we don't even know what we're gonna do one day to the next, and you don't have to say nothing to me. I could be laying in my bed and I will tell you I say prayers for many of you because I can almost see you doing the same thing I am laying at my bedside holding my hands and saying God I don't know how I'm going to do this tomorrow but I'm going to have faith that you do know that you will see me through we're all there we just don't tell everybody and a lot of times we don't tell everybody because we're afraid of judgment Nobody would understand us anyways. This world is quite different these days. But I want you all to know that I do care. I do understand. I haven't been in many different situations. And like I told you, I'm not rich. As you see, I've got a country farmhouse. My land is a farm land. It's actually a city property that I turned into farmland. I don't have a lot. <laughs> a lot of work. Absolute a lot of work. But when I look at all that work, and I see the treasures coming from it, and I come into this kitchen where I come in here with you, and I could put a meal together and put that on my table, and I fold my hands giving thanks to the Lord every day for what I do. It's worth it all to me. Are these videos worth making it when I know it's not for everybody? Are these videos worth making it when I watch subscriptions going up and down? Are these videos worth making it, not knowing where my future is going to go with this? Yes. Why? Because I'm making so many lovely friends. I am forming a family that means more to me than they will ever know. You all bless me in ways I can't even describe. Put my big girl panties on here. I'm not going to do this. That's the things I do off camera you are amazing to me and I know I understand y'all I'm there with you I still have things that I still research and again like for me I have to be able to basically try to monitor my weight and like I told you I'm trying to quit smoking too for the most part things are getting easier but nighttime is hard when they're snacking so yeah I'm up and down roller coaster on this weight thing and I'm learning, I didn't know how to use a Mediterranean lifestyle before, just like none of us knew how to use a low carb system before. It's a learning curve and I'm doing that. So everything that I learn, everything that I do, I share it. The desserts, I understand not everybody who's on keto or low carb, they'll stay away from desserts because maybe it kicks a, a sugar craving but then what about those who can? What about those like my husband who actually have had this and you can't just stop him altogether? 
So I make these. Is this for everybody? No. And I'm okay with that. I absolutely understand that. I know you're not going to be able to want everything that I do. And I am perfectly fine. But I'm also here for everybody. I'm here for those who have no health issues whatsoever. So I can make my meals as normal as possible. Mediterranean life isn't just a diet, y'all. This is an everyday life. The way actually our life should be. Fresh, unprocessed, and beautiful meals put on our table that is colorful. It's a way of incorporating, yes, whole grains, beans, lentils. Uh, yes, is it carbs? Absolutely it's carbs. But it's a way for everybody. And then there's another side of me. When I have my husband, I have a low-carb side of me, which I can reach out for those who do that. So I can present to you desserts or regular meals in a way that you can feel like you're partly normal in this world and not different and you don't have to grab a freaking rice cake which you can't have in the first place something dry bland nothing disgusting and say okay well this is my life now wrong absolutely wrong and i'm here to prove that to you i've already spoken about all that but and i don't want to be a broken record i just want you to know i took you out here today i don't know why i get led like this but i learned to obey when i do Maybe somebody needed something out of this. Maybe somebody can get something out of this. And maybe you know that you aren't alone. And I hope that when you went out here with me and you gathered with me, when you got to be able to bring these into our home and we go into our kitchen, I sincerely hope that you get that peaceful feeling like I did. When you listen to those birds, can you do that when you go to the grocery store? No. When you get to look at those plants grow up, pull those weeds and attend to them, watch the fruits of your labor just producing everywhere, and they just keep producing the more you pick. It's a gratifying experience. Pick them, bring them in create your meals it's a different feeling that i literally enjoy cooking these days i absolutely look forward to it i don't hate food anymore because at one point food was my enemy but i learned how to use it and that's why i share it that's why i shared my gathering with you because and i do believe i was meant to do that to take you on this gathering to show you why it would be important and you know the leading that I take when I follow through um, y'all maybe it's a message that the Lord is trying to reach out to you letting you know that whoever this is for there are provisions and there are ways fear not Shh. sorry y'all just fear not there are ways that we can be able to enjoy life in abundance and I'm gonna let this go y'all um, I try to be versatile in many things but when something like this happens it's for somebody and I just can't let this go by so yeah and you know this don't happen all the time I really try to I have a love for all y'all so i just had to get this one out i love you dearly each and every one of you i just hope whoever gets this message that you get it and you know that i'm your sister i'm here i hope you enjoyed the gathering and you understand what this homestead is about what it can do for you and what every little bit what every little bit do can be for your family especially in the times that we're in right now and when you gather like I just gathered, like we gathered together, and when we come into this kitchen and create a meal together, I hope one day that you get to feel what that peace feels like on me when I bring this in every time. So much love to each and every one of you. Dearly, much love to you from Parton's Heritage Homestead.